Hello, um, welcome to lab three, where we're going to talk about the moon, eclipses, and tides. Here we have two pictures of the moon. This is the side that faces us all the time, and you can look up at the moon when it's full, and you will um, always see this view. It does change a smidgen. Um, there are times in the orbit where we can see a little bit more on the edges than at other times. It just depends on what is going on with the orbit um, that month. Uh, this is the far side of the moon. So this is the back side of this. Um, this was first seen when the Apollo astronauts actually were orbiting the moon and they took these pictures of the back side of the moon. You'll notice there's a little bit of difference here. Um, the color might be associated just with the, I grabbed these images off Google, and this one just might have different processing than this one. But if you'll notice, there's not as much dark spots, which if you remember from the lecture, these are lava flows. They call them maria. Um, they thought they were oceans, but they're actually just lava flows. Um, there is almost kind of more cratering that is visible. Um, you'll see here, here's some big craters with lots of uh, ejecta that's coming out of it. So a rock comes down. Here's another one too. Uh, and then a whole bunch of material is, is splashed up and then it falls back onto the surface. And so we can use stuff like this to see which features are older. So this Maria is older than this crater. This crater is newer because the rock came in, smashed, and then splashed all this dirt on the already formed lava flow that was there. Anyway, if we have uh, here, we have, um, if you'll notice real quick, there's like a crater and then there's a crater within the crater. Um, and so probably this big one was here first and then the little one hit. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the structure there. But anyway, if you look at them closer, like see here's one um, that's very clear. And then there's a crater inside of that one. So this one is newer and the other crater is older. Uh, we do that kind of logic with geology as well. And so we can sort of tell a lot of things about what's going on just by sort of what, you know, things are inside of other things. Uh, you know, like uh, here's a Maria, but then there's a crater right there. Um, for my master's degree, one of the things we had to do was estimate uh, the amount of cratering that was on a specific area of the moon. We had a picture of the moon. And we had to like uh, equate sizes with we'd measure the little craters that we could see in like millimeters with um, with the ruler. And then we had to like categorize how many we saw and everything like that. So was it was a pretty interesting project. Anyway, so here's the moon. We've got lots of data on the moon uh, that we'll talk about in just a second. Okay, so here is some data on the moon. So the orbital period is 27 days, but that's kind of with respect to the background stars. Um, the synodic period is actually 29 days. Um, so, um, oops. So, um, yeah. So we've talked about that before. Um, so the synodic period incorporates not only the orbital relation to the parent star, but also to celestial objects, making it um, different than the other stuff. So anyway, 29 days is how long it takes to go from one full moon to another full moon. Um, the inclination is 5.14 degrees, 145 degrees. We'll have a picture on that in just a second, so you'll see that. The mean radius is um, 1,737.4 kilometers, which is about 0.27 of the Earth's. So it's about 27% of the Earth's. The mass is 7.32 times 4 times, um, 7.342 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. So if you'll remember from our first lab with our numbers, your scientific notation, this is positive, so that means it's very big. So this is 7.342 times, and then we add um, times 10 with all these 22 zeros behind it, or 0.0123 of Earth's. So the mass is only 1% of the Earth's mass. The rotation period is 29.53 days, actually 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, 2.9 seconds. 
Um, so this is the synodic solar day. So 29, it takes 29 and a half ish days to rotate. Um, so the orbital period and the rotation period are basically the same. That is why we only see one face toward us at all times. Uh, the angular diameter. So when uh, we talked about circles and degrees and arc minutes and arc seconds. So the angular diameter of the moon when we look at it in the sky is 28.3 to 34.1 arc minutes. So it will change depending on how close it is to the earth or how far away it is, but it's about 30 arc minutes. The apparent magnitude when it's full is negative 12.74. If you remember, this was a logarithmic kind of scale. It was um, the apparent magnitude, so what, how it appears to us. Um, and if you remember, the uh, scientist sort of ranked the stars that he could see with one being um, the brightest and six being the faintest. Um, and we can see about to about six. So um, the, the, the fainter they get, the larger the number is. And so if we have a negative number here, that means it's really bright. Um, I believe the sun is in a negative 26 or something like that. So anyway, um, this is the source for this, I know, is Wikipedia. Um, it does have some uses. You're not supposed to, you know, quote Wikipedia in a scientific paper. But did you know? that if you look at Wikipedia, at the very, very bottom, sometimes they do reference scientific papers. And if you're writing a paper and you need to find a journal article or something, you can find them sometimes on Wikipedia. So it does have any excuses. Anyway, um, okay, so we'll have more information on this in just a second while we look at pictures. So um, here is the moon as it's orbiting around Earth. So as I said before, it's got kind of a five degree tilt. So our equator is here. And then if you measure this angle here, let me see if I can draw it rather. So this angle right here is going to be five degree tilt. Now when we talk about, um, we did talk about the Earth a little bit, but the Earth has a 23 degree tilt compared to the sun. So the sun out here, so the Earth has a 23 degree tilt and that's based here. Anyway, um, so the moon has a five degree tilt. This is one of the reasons why we don't have eclipses every month. Um, so there has to be a specific situation where um, if you'll notice right here on this orbit, so this sort of switches as it goes around. Um, and so we have to have a specific lineup in order to get an eclipse, which we are going to talk about that uh, in this lab in just a little bit. So I'll just I'll leave you with here is the tilt that we have. Um, sometimes things have to line up just perfectly for us to get an eclipse, but this is kind of what it's um, what we look at for the moon. All right, so the big thing with the moon is why do we have different phases of the moon? And so here we have the Earth, and then we have the moon going around the Earth. So we start with a new moon. And the reason why we can't see it, this is what it looks like, is because the light side is lit up, the back side is dark here. So the side that faces the Earth is completely in shadow and that's why we cannot see it. So the near side of the moon and the far side of the moon, the far side of the moon is completely lit up. The The dark side of the moon is not a all the time thing if you're a uh, um, if you're a Pink Floyd fan. Anyway, okay, so then it moves as if this is its orbit around the Earth. They don't have the til til tilt represented here, but this is the orbit around the Earth. So the Earth is spinning this way, and we're taking 24 hours to go around, but the moon is taking 29 days to go around. Okay, so we start here, and then the moon moves. It takes about a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, right? So that's it takes about a week to get over here. Um, so it moves just a little bit, and then we develop a waxing crescent. So when I have you do your um, observing opportunities, we look for the waxing crescent or we look for the full moon. That's just what I like to do. So we move it over here, we get a waxing crescent. Uh, we keep on moving. Now half of it is illuminated and half of it in, in shadow. And so this is what we call first quarter. 
it continues on. We have a waxing gibbous. This extra big one, but not quite full, is called a gibbous moon. Um, and then here at position E, if you'll notice, the shadow is all on the back and we see the whole front is illuminated. Then as it moves on, we've got a waning gibbous. We've got third quarter moon and then we've got a waning crescent. And I believe I had mentioned in the lectures that the reason, uh, the way that I remember how this is going, if you look here, this one looks like a D. So the curve is a D. And this one, it looks like a C. So it's like a bad uh, college course where you start with a D and you want to end with a C. So whenever I look up in the sky, that is what I try to remember. When I look at the moon, I'm like, okay, does that look like a D or a C? Also, um, these kind of rise at different times during the day. So a full moon will rise uh, right at sunset and it will set at sunrise, right? I mean, this is a little, this is a little, those three dimensional thinking kind of thing that you have to do. Um, so if we are right here on Earth, it is sunset on Earth. When we look out into the eastern sky, we will see the moon. Then we will rotate underneath the moon and it will set before, um, before with, at sunrise, right? So we can see it. It's not really moving much over an evening. Um, it appears to move. Um, because we are moving underneath it. Does that make sense? So it'll stay kind of stationary to the background stars for that night. The next night, though, it will look different along, among the background stars as it moves around. Okay, does that, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, um, so these you can see at night after sunset. These are moons that you can see in the morning. So if you happen to get up really early one morning and you see the moon before sunrise, then you know it's also a waning crescent. So when we talk about the moon's orbit and we start talking about eclipses and stuff, that's where you kind of have to develop some 3D thinking. So if you have any questions or if you have any challenges, make sure you email me and we can have a discussion about that. I have actually, I do have office hours. Um, and so if there's anything, um, they're by appointment only, but if you have anything that you'd like to talk about or if you have any specific questions, um, we could maybe Zoom if that is something uh, that you're really interested in. Um, okay. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.